affordances again. Or those of you who are familiar with all day vision, actually, we started vision with when we, when, and we thought, I don't know, four years ago, we thought about we can do actually affordance predictions for objects. This thing, I don't know what it is. I don't care if it's an apple or a girl. I, I know I can eat it. It's an edible thing. So being able to talk about the affordance of the objects, the functionalities. So we're trying to actually uh, explore that direction. And I believe uh, with the recent, recent stuff on being able to predict geometry for uh, images, I think there is actually great potential. I believe there is great potential in predicting the affordances. An example would be uh, affordances in, or functional, functional recognition inside a room. So we, we now have great machinery that can predict, get, that can model a room with a box and then predict the properties. So if I have access to those things, those uh, information, I can actually talk about affordances and functions. I also want to explore the knowledge selection, which is an extremely hard problem in a more principled way. Meaning that being able to learn what explicitly, what people tend to include in their reports and what to exclude in their reports. Um, there are other things if you're interested in talking about. There are other things that I didn't talk about. If you're interested in transfer learning and its application in uh, multi-view human activity recognition, if you're interested in sign, la sign language recognition, if you're in general interested in activity recognition, uh, multi-view object recognition, we can talk. We can, if you're interested in uh, scene discovery and multitask learning, if you're interested in manifold learning coupled with multitask learning, and if you're interested in applications of machine learning in network security to find intruding examples, um, feel free actually to stop by to talk. With that, I close. Okay. So let's take a few questions from the audience. Um, how does your mental space look like? Does it look with words or teaching? So good question. Um, the meaning space that we have has a very crude representation, but it's semantic, meaning that it doesn't have coolest features. So the way that we represent meaning at this point is we have objects, actions, and scenes. And then we have a CRF that actually coupled everything together because those predictions should be correlated. This space is, this representation is crude, meaning that if I have, if I want to model two different objects, one is subject, the other is object, I cannot model it with the current representation. But that's highly semantic uh, feature. How do you measure the distance in the minute space? So you can think of it as a distribution over all possible triplets. No. Then I have two distributions and I know how to operate. The second question is um, about the phrasal recognition. Uh, you said you have a phrases that, for example, a person can add be under the the host. How about the images of it? So those are actually easy to deal with. Um, so we're not explicitly saying those, meaning that I'm not sitting down somewhere and writing down that a horse cannot be on, on the, I don't know, a car cannot be on the top of a horse. So those are the things that your model learns from your data. So if I have a data set of every regular image that is not inverted, then your model learns those. If you include inverted models, basically, your, your model's confidence about cars cannot be on the top of a horse is less. And if you really want to actually be careful about the detailed images, that's easy to fix. Because if, there, if, if everything is inverted, you can actually infer it. Can you clarify a little the decision-making strategy of your system? So as I understand correct, if I understand correctly, you have some kind of base learners that, okay, express opinion about the objects, but then you have to put those together and, okay, so is your framework a Bayesian framework or is it EM or you use many different frameworks? Uh, it depends on which part of the talk are you talking about. So we have different uh, reasoning frameworks for each part. If you specify which part you're talking, I can elaborate more. Okay, okay. <coughs> what is the second part? I can actually say everything. So if I, if, if I want to, uh, the, the attributes, for example, they're independent predictions. For the uh, visual phrases, the way that we actually use reasoning is the decoding that I talk about, being able to say car, cars cannot be on top of horses. For the second part, which was basically the spatial, the, uh, 
the localization of the attributes, we actually have a probabilistic reasoning framework, which is basically a simple latent roots model that you can do EM for the inference. I'm sorry, for the learning, and then you do marginalization for the inference, which is again the exact inference problem. Thank you. Shay. Just now you talk about the similarity matrix, which has a column as the, the imaging region and the, the row is the phrases. So I'm quite interested to know how you compute the similarity scores. Mm -hmm. So think about it this way. I have a machinery that gives you, think about I have a black box, that given an image, it breaks it down to regions. And given a sentence, I can actually chunk it to different phases. Okay. So if I have that, then if I have a data set that says, that has a label of a person riding a horse for the whole picture, I can set it up as a multiple instance learning problem. Meaning that I have a multiple instance learner that looks at each image as a bag of examples. Are you familiar with multiple instance learning? Or So multiple instance learning, the way it works is assumes that instead of trying to classify one positive example from one negative example, what it does is assumes that there are bags of examples. And then each bag is labeled as positive if there is one positive example. And if it's not, it's at least one positive example. And if it's not, it labeled as negative example. Then the task is, one, separate positive bags from negative bags. Two, find positive instances inside the bags. So I can set up the problem of image regions as the same way. So I have many images that are labeled with a person riding a horse. But I don't know which region is the one that actually corresponds to the person riding the horse. There might be even two of them which are very similar. So I can set it up as looking at each image as a, bag, as a positive bag, meaning that among all of those regions, at least one of them corresponds to the person riding the horse. And if I have enough of those examples, I can set up my multiple instance learning problem and then try to infer which, which of those regions are, actually, regions are actually the person riding the horse. That provides me a scoring function for each image region and a frame. And then once I built my phrase, I actually don't need to do my multiple instance learning. What I can do is I can do matching for region to region matching. Then if this region matches to one of those regions in my phrase table, then that I know is a person riding a horse. Therefore, there's a high chance of this region being a person riding a horse. Did, did I answer your question? Or? All right, with that, let's thank one more time the speaker. Thank you very much.